G'day, Kev here again. You may well have already seen enough of my mug installing this RRS complete front end in this 64 Falcon. Well, today is the next lot of awesome RRS additions to get this baby rolling again, including a set of rear disc brakes. But that's not all, nuh -uh. We're installing the RRS 3-link independent rear suspension kit. And by the end of the day, we'll have a rolling chassis. And I can hardly wait to turn the key and the beast rolls to life. But off to work. Now what I've got here is a nine inch diff. Isn't she lovely? And before we hook up the three link, I want to take the opportunity to install all the brakes. It's much better on my back working at this sort of height rather than overhead like that. Take the mounting plate and check that it and the axle flange are free of burrs or distortion. Give it all a good clean. This one's pretty good. Slip on the mounting plate and just hang it on the bolts for now. Slide in the axle and locate it in the spline. You might have to jiggle it a bit to do that. Then line up the bearing with its housing. As you tighten up the bearing retainer plate, it'll pull the bearing right in home. Tighten the nuts to 30 foot-pounds of torque. Align the handbrake shoes to make it easy to fit the disc. Check the drum surface is clean and locate the disc over the handbrake shoes and the axle studs. Use a wheel brace or a rattle gun to tighten the disc on evenly and then once all the nuts are on, take them all off again. Time for the colourful bit. Four wheel disc brakes and big calipers like these are going to make a huge difference to this old Ford and they're quite easy to fit. You might have to pull the pads right back to fit them over the new disc. Now it's time to three link this nine inch. Remove the original pinion housing bolts and mount the torque arm using the 3.8 cap screws supplied. You'll need to use cap screws because there's some tight spots on the underside. Tighten them all up to 32 foot pounds. Eight inch and nine inch diffs have two size spigot location holes for the trailing arm. If you've got the big one, you use it as supplied. And if you've got the little one, remove the spigot. It's as simple as that. When mounting the trailing arm, square it up as much as possible before installing the U-bolts. Because this car's been tubbed and the diff shortened, we've had to make a few minor modifications, namely for the location of the handbrake cable where it fouled the U-bolt. It's a simple job though, just shorten the U-bolt. Next, take the two biggest bolts in the kit and the shock mount frame and put it in position. From inside the car, take the big fat washers and slip it over the bolt. Put on the nylock nuts and tighten them up to 75 foot-pounds. Now depending on the car you have, you may need to remove the bump stops from underneath. Drill all 12 load spreader plate holes and clean up all the burrs. This mounting plate transfers force from the shocks to the chassis. Next, take the reinforcement plate and make sure the mounting holes are on the inner side at the front and rear. The next bit to install is the watts linkage. The watt? Well here's what's what about the watts. It has two main functions and the first is to locate the diff centrally in the vehicle and the second is to define the roll centre of the vehicle. It's got three adjustments but for the moment we've just mounted it on the centre one. It's really easy to install. Just slip it between the chassis rails a little bit further back than you want to be, slide it forward and it locates itself by jamming itself between the chassis rails. Just give it a little gentle persuasion with a soft mallet and you're done. Well, almost. Some more drilling. Ah, don't you love the sound of steel cutting steel on a Sunday morning? <laughs> I bet the neighbours just love it. Bolt it up to the floor pan in the same way that you fitted the load spreader plate. Just make sure all the bolts and nuts are nice and tight. Along this edge there's normally a right angle piece on the mounting plate. We've had to remove it because the tub job on this Falcon has removed the lip off the chassis rail. We're using crush tubes so that we can bolt through the rail without crushing it. RS kits are designed to suit standard chassis. They can be changed to suit even heavily modified cars. Next, take the torque arm cross member 
and position it between the chassis rails approximately a half an inch from the fold in the floor pan. Whilst mounting needs to be accurate, its exact position isn't critical. But ultimately, you want the pivot arm of the link to sit at 90 degrees to the torque arm. With someone on the other side helping you, tighten the nuts and bolts up to 30 foot-pounds of torque. Now when you pick up your RRS suspension kit, it might look a little bit daunting, there's lots and lots of bits, but trust me, if you can pull the old parts out of an old Ford, it's twice as easy to put the new RRS gear back in. And when it comes to tuning your new suspension system, well, that's the subject of another video, and we've enlisted the help of some professionals with that one. You see, by replacing an old suspension system essentially designed for a horse and cart with an RRS three-link rear, you're basically getting the same suspension system a V8 supercar has. Ooh, I might need a bit more muscle up front. And speaking of muscle, I could use a bit right now. Muscles! Depending on the angle of your installation, you might need to get a little inventive with how you lift the assembly into position. Align the assembly and then bolt the torque arm to the cross member and tighten it home. Now for the trailing arms. For this, you need to use your existing bolts. And this is a little bit tricky. It can test your patience. You might need to jiggle it around a little bit and it does help to grease the bolts liberally. But they came out, so they're going to go back in. Patience, Kev, patience. Ah, there we go. Next, persuade the watts linkage into position nicely with a soft hammer, if need be. That was a bit tight, but it fits. Better tight anyway. And we're almost done. These fully adjustable coilover shocks are the final ingredient in our recipe to make this old bird handle like she's on rails. The top slips straight into the mount. The bottom has two spaces. Now tighten the shocks in good and tight. The three link in, but it's getting dark and we promise to have this car back on its wheels tonight. We're going to do it. No time for talking, but geez, I can work fast when I have to. Uh, it's looking good, isn't it? Nice and low. And not much to do now. All we need to do is connect the handbrake, put in some brake lines, some fluids, I'll fit an engine and a gearbox, electrical, some seats, doors, glass. Okay, there's a bit to do. But it's definitely half past beer. So, Muscles, how about a beer, mate? Get your own beer. There's no love. Except you and me, old girl.